Good morning, good morning, good morning, for this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the word says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So I You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name.
Hallelujah and praise be to God. We are grateful that God knows our name, that God walks with us and God talks with us and God reminds us that we belong to the Lord. Beloved, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the preached word, join me as we pray. Oh, holy God, we are grateful that you know our name. God, we are grateful that you created us in our and put us in our mother's womb god we are grateful that you know the number of hairs that are on our head and you created us fearfully and wonderfully made so god we rejoice on this day for all the many blessings that you continue to bring into our lives oh god we are truly grateful now oh lord we pray that you would posture our hearts and ready our minds and ready our spirits to hear a word from you God, this is the preaching time. Create in us clean hearts, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. God, we pray that you would speak through me as your servant, that we would hear a word that would liberate us, that will pull us closer to you, O God, and that will help us on this journey of faith. This is our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And praise be to God. Beloved, this morning, I would like to preach from the text in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 15 through 21. Again, it is the Old Testament text in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 15 through 21. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Then the Lord told him, he's speaking to Elijah, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. 
When you arrive there, anoint Hazael to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, from the town of Abel Meholah, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed by Jehu. And those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elijah. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. So Elijah went and found Elisha, son of Saphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak around his shoulders and then walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, go, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his attendant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, for the fourth installment of the series, What's Next? I would like to preach and teach with this sermon title or subject in mind, Seize the Moment. Yes, just go ahead and type it in the chat. Seize the moment. Seize that opportunity that God has right before your eyes. Beloved, it has become apparent to me that God has and is leading all of us into uh, something new. As we emerge out of COVID-19 restrictions due to increased vaccinations, we are navigating yet another new normal. Some people are seeing family members and friends that they haven't seen in over a year. Other people are doing things such as flying again, going on some of those long distance vacations or even some of those business trips. Other people are going to sporting events. Maybe they're going to see their favorite basketball team play, or maybe they're re-engaging in some of those sporting events that they did pre-COVID, such as swimming or basketball or soccer and those other things that they are engaging back into. And then churches are reopening their buildings for worship at half capacity and some at greater capacity. People are navigating re-entering into their offices after working from home in their cozy spots that they have already made at home. They are going back into the building. Uh, some people are yet getting uh, new jobs and new cars and new perspectives on life. Some people are navigating uh, new relationships. Some are beginning and some are ending. Uh, people are navigating through uh, losing weight and new patterns of eating or even wrestling with added weight and new schedules uh, along with uh, children who are no longer homeschooling. Uh, but yet they are going back into these camps and preparing for school, y'all, in almost a month uh, and other activities that they are emerging uh, into. Uh, as we graduate from these restrictions, uh, y'all, it's been over a year, almost a year and a half. Uh, these restrictions, these new patterns of living are emerging. Uh, and although we have done some of these activities before, emerging back into these spaces, uh, still feels new. Y'all can go ahead and say amen. Uh, we have to figure out how comfortable we are in some of these larger crowds or navigating spaces with people that we haven't been in contact before, even uh, as you're going into some of the grocery stores uh, and even as you're going into some of these shopping malls. Uh, even though we have flown many times uh, after COVID is slightly just a little bit different. Uh, sometimes those seats seem a little bit closer 
closer than before. My point is, y'all, we are all navigating a, a new season or seasons uh, that God has ordained. Yes, I said it, that God has ordained uh, for you and for me. Uh, so as we discern during this preaching series in July 2021 uh, of what's next, know uh, that the answer to that question uh, is connecting to seizing uh, your moment uh, or seizing the new thing or the new things uh, that God is bringing into your life right now. Uh, Y'all just take a moment and think about what God has shown you uh, just this month uh, or last month uh, or what you learned in 2020 that God is using to move you closer to the new thing uh, that is emerging just this year. Uh, what new frame of mind or new outlook on life is God using uh, to position you uh, for the new opportunity uh, God has knocking uh, at your door? Uh, what new ways or patterns of thinking uh, or worshiping uh, has God invited you into? Uh, as you have been locked in your home, uh, you have had to discern how to go deeper uh, in your faith in God uh, by yourself, uh, worshiping virtually, uh, worshiping as you study your word, uh, worshiping as you pray in the morning, uh, worshiping as you seek the Holy Spirit uh, with all that you have. Uh, and maybe God is calling you uh, to hang on to some of these things as you emerge uh, into this new season uh, and seize your moment. Uh, what new perspectives have you received that you will carry over into this new year? Uh, what new relationships or new health patterns uh, have you adopted that you will make you that will make you stronger and better on the journey ahead? Uh, my siblings, God is leading all of us into something new uh, and is inviting us to seize, uh, take hold of your moment. Just go ahead and type it in the chat. Seize your moment. Seize your moment. God doesn't want us to run away from it, y'all. Uh, because you are intimidated or scared about it. Uh, God wants you to step out on faith and take hold uh, and snatch that thing uh, because this is your moment. Uh, there will never be another moment like the one that we are living in right now. Uh, and I will declare to you every space, uh, community, corporation, synagogue, mosque, congregation, uh, bank, family, you name the space, uh, has the opportunity to do uh, something new. Uh, God has pushed the reset button in 2021 uh, and wiped the canvas clear. Uh, now God is asking all of us, will we seize uh, the opportunities uh, that are right in front of us? Uh, will you accept the invitation to walk into the new season uh, that God is inviting and directing you into? Uh, will you lay aside your fear and apprehension and leave some things behind in order to step uh, into the new thing uh, that God has prepared for you. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more time uh, and I'm going to ask you a few more times in this sermon. Will you seize uh, the moment? Uh, and y'all, I'm all in the text as we find Elijah inviting into answering this question uh, as he is approached by Elisha with a call to seize the opportunity to step into a new vocation. Just type new vocation, new opportunity. Elijah and Elisha's life, uh, they collide in a convergence of calls uh, when Elisha is given the chance to take hold uh, of the opportunity to be a prophet, uh, to be a mouthpiece for God, uh, to speak the word of God so that others will know the way that God wants them to go. Uh, he has the opportunity to serve the Lord uh, after the leadership of an amazing prophet named Elijah. Elijah's call is coming to to an end, uh, but Elisha's journey uh, is just beginning. Uh, maybe there's someone here this morning uh, that you realize that you are being prepared uh, to step into a season uh, where someone's journey is just ending uh, and yours is just beginning. Uh, maybe God is elevating you to uh, a new promotion. Uh, maybe he wants to move you uh, from the space where you are serving uh, to leading others and teaching them how to serve. God is moving Elijah from being prophet and positioning Elisha for the beginning of his journey. And he is given the opportunity to say, will you seize 
your moment, Elisha. Will you seize uh, this opportunity? Uh, Elijah bestows upon him the mantle of prophet uh, as was ordained by God. Uh, you remember in the beginning of the scripture that we read, uh, Elisha was told by God to go uh, and bestow upon Elisha the call to be prophet. Uh, and it went a little like this. Uh, Elijah was at work, y'all. Uh, he was plowing his father's fields, uh, farming with the oxen. Uh, Elijah came to him through uh, his cloak. It was something like a cape or, or something like a, a coat over him, uh, symbolizing an invitation uh, to do something new. Uh, but in order for Elisha to step into uh, the call, uh, he had to receive uh, the invitation. Uh, and I want to speak to someone this morning. Uh, do you receive the invitation from God uh, to step into uh, your next level? Oh, my God. God wants someone to step in uh, and step up uh, to the next level that God has already prepared for you. Uh, it's already prepared. Uh, the banquet table is already set. Uh, the food Food is laid out. Uh, your chair is laid, pushed back. Uh, and all you got to do is step in uh, and sit down. Uh, God has already prepared the way. Uh, oh, Elijah, y'all, he was working and minding his own business. Maybe like someone that's listening to me to this morning, uh, doing what he always did. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, a shift happened. Uh, and his life changed forever when Elijah came and laid the the weight of a different call uh, on his life, uh, one that was urgent and would change the course of his career, family, and life forever. Uh, and maybe you have been like Elijah. You have been minding your own business uh, and doing your work uh, as a social worker, as an IT tech, as a doctor, as a trained teacher, uh, as a painter, uh, as someone uh, who has even worked in janitorial service, uh, but they there became a shift uh, in your life and you didn't know what was happening uh, but you knew that there was a call uh, that God had in your spirit uh, and on your heart uh, and it wouldn't leave you uh, and you had to seize uh, your moments. Uh, beloved God calls on God's call in our lives, it isn't always convenient, and it might even catch you by surprise, but I want to remind you, it is exactly what you are created for. The call may come while you are focusing on a different career path, and you're digging into a different direction in life, but when the time is right, God will shift your focus by laying something heavy on your heart, and it won't go away until you say yes. Lord. Yes, I'll follow you, Jesus. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say because this is what I was ordained to do. Elijah had a call on his life. And in the midst of the inconvenience, Elijah has the opportunity to seize the moment and follow Elijah or remain on the farm with his family and do what he always did. He was being called into a new vocation as prophet, something that he hadn't experienced before. But it was the opportune time for Elijah to move into a God-ordained and appointed vocation. And maybe there is someone listening to me today that there, this is your opportune time, and God is asking you, will you seize your moment? Y'all, there is a woman by the name of Dr. Valerie Daniel Carter who seized her moment. She is the president and CEO of V&J Foods Holding Company. It's a multi-brand, multi-state operation, and, and she is the largest female-owned franchise organization in the country. And she is also one of 2020's top women in business. Dr. Daniels Carter Quick Service Restaurant Empire. Y'all, it's comprised of any and soft pretzels. We know all about those. Uh, Burger King, uh, Coffee Beanery, Nino Southern Size, uh, Mayo My Frozen Yogurt, Pizza Hut, and the newest venture is Captain D Seafood Kitchen. 
Y'all, she built an empire due to her knowledge and dedication to establishing her career, but she seized a huge moment in 2014 when she bought a minority stake in the Milwaukee Bucks, making her the only single black female co-owner of an NBA team. This is the kicker, though, y'all. She bought a minority stake in the team while they were struggling. Yeah, you heard me right. While the team was struggling. She says that she is reminded, though, that the infancy of anything has to be developed and nurtured, which she did with her investment. And then she says this. I am reminded that I am not self-made. I am God-made. Oh, hallelujah. That's someone's shout right there. I am not self-made. I didn't do it by myself. I am God made. So I want to encourage someone today. You might be in the infancy stage of seizing your moment, of grasping that new thing, and you don't even know what step to take. Well, don't give up and don't lose heart. You haven't seen the best of what God has in store for you. Just continue to be faithful in doing what God says do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own own understanding in all your ways acknowledge God and God will walk with you step by step by step and even in the infancy stage God is developing you God is developing you because remember you are not self-made you are God made God made you the head and not the tail above and not beneath God made you to be a blessing so God will turn your morning into dancing uh, and your sorrows into joy. Uh, God will lead and guide your path through uh, the infancy stage uh, to develop you uh, and so that you can see the full capacity uh, of what God has given you uh, and the amount of anointing uh, that you can carry. Uh, God will take care of you uh, and make sure that you get to uh, and through uh, the new season uh, according to God's will uh, and God's power. Your blessing, oh hallelujah, is stepping into the new newness of the call, the newness of the infancy stage, the newness of the nudge on your heart, the newness of emerging back into some old spaces and some old patterns or maybe some new patterns and finding new blessings. The blessing God had for Elijah was connected to accepting his call uh, and the blessing God had for Dr. Valerie Daniels Carter was in purchasing uh, a stake in a struggling team uh, and building a franchise uh, while trailblazing her way uh, as president and CEO uh, while enduring the pushback uh, as a black woman uh, and the blessing God has for you uh, is re in receiving uh, the, the thing that God has right in front of you uh, and stepping out of the boat uh, and learning that you can walk on water and you won't fall uh, because God is with you. Uh, I'm going to ask you again, will you seize the moment? Y'all, Elijah received the command of God from Elijah to be his successor as prophet, which meant leaving some things behind in order to go where God ordained. So not only will the new season be something that will take courage, take courage for you to move into. You will have to leave some things uh, in order to go where God is taking you. Just type there, leave some things, leave some things, let some things go. Elijah left his vocation farming with his father. He left his mother and father to travel with Elijah and to be mentored by him. He had to leave what he knew and was comfortable with in the space where he grew up in order to explore what God had ordained for his life. So I ask you, what do you have to let go of in order to seize the moment God is inviting you into? You know what it is. Do you have to let go of doubt concerning your ability to accomplish the goal or start the business or obtain a degree, enroll in the course, or step out on faith, and even submit the application? 
Do you need to let go of some people who are pulling you down or are a bad influence on you? Do you need to let go of how the career is supposed to work out and just trust God? Like Elijah, your call might be outside of your geographical area. That means you might have to move. And in order to embrace the call God has for you, you may have to be in a different space uh, with those whom are closest to you will remain in order for you to go there. But guess what? You can trust uh, that God will sustain your current relationships uh, while adding new people to your life that will support and encourage you. I call that a double blessing. Uh, what I'm trying to help us understand here uh, is that in order to move uh, into the new season, uh, into the new opportunity to take hold of what God has for you, uh, some things will change. Uh, you got to let go of some things in order to seize the moment and opportunity that God has in store for you. And oftentimes, y'all, the hardest thing to let go of is what you have in mind for your life. You had in mind to go to school, to get a good job, and then to go over here and do whatever it is. But then God said, no, baby, I called you to do this, a different vocation. And I called you to go over here. But when we release that uh, and move into what God has for us, uh, we will be abundantly blessed. Uh, and one thing I know as you consider what God is calling you to release uh, in order to seize the moment, uh, remember this, God uh, has already worked out every detail for your good. Uh, God has already perfected the things or situations uh, that concern you. Uh, God has already made a way, ordained your steps, arranged the finances, and provided for the journey. Uh, God has already provided all your family needs. Uh, now all you have to do uh, is let go uh, and let God have his way. Uh, trust God uh, and know that all things uh, will work out for your good. Uh, and some of y'all might be wondering, well, Pastor, how do you know this? Uh, God has already chosen Elijah. It is in the text, y'all, uh, even knew his capacity to serve, in, which we see in verse 17. Uh, God knew he had to leave his family uh, to go with Elijah, and God knew how that would affect him. Uh, so he didn't send uh, Elisha alone. Uh, he gave him a mentor, and God knew the type of mentor that he needed uh, and knew the type of prophet uh, that he uh, had embedded within his spirit. Uh, so he gave him a mentor with the capacity to prepare him for the call ahead and knew the proper time to release him to be a prophet without his mentor. God knew all things and provided for every situation. Hear me today, beloved. Don't worry about how it's going to work out. Trust God. Trust God with what keeps you up at night. Trust God to give you peace for the journey. Trust God to help you work through every detail. Trust God to care for your relationships because they belong to God too. Trust God to provide a direction and steps along the way. Trust God with your process. Because guess what? God has ordained your days and ordained your life. And the scripture tells us God desires great things for us so we can find rest and reassurance in believing that God will not leave us astray. God won't lead you down the wrong path and God will provide everything you need to do what God is calling you to do. Because guess what? You stepping into your call is connected to someone else whom you will bless abundantly. So as you move out into your call, know that God is with you. In order for us to seize the moment and step fully into new season, God has in store for us, we got to let go of some things. And then next, in order to seize the moment, we must be teachable. Just type teachable, teachable. Elijah was called by God to be the next prophet after Elijah. But Elisha followed Elijah as a mentor. Some scholars say that he followed him for six years before Elisha was by himself and served as prophet. What I want us to see here is that God 
has provided everything Elijah needed to do what Elijah was called to do. And God has provided everything you need for your divine call. You are anointed and ordained. You have the gifts to accomplish the call. And the teachable thing, the teachable moments, the mentorship or the training, all it does is draws out your full giftedness and refines your God-given skills and your voice for the God-ordained call that is before you. And let me explain, and maybe this illustration of a coffee bean will help all of us understand. Y'all, coffee beans are the roasted seed of a coffee fruit. And I didn't know that until I was doing this study. But it's a beautiful red fruit. And it's oftentimes called a coffee cherry. The coffee seeds are full of stored energy. Particularly, they are complete with complex sugars and fats and acids and are made up of microscopic plant fibers. To transform the seeds into something that we can brew, they are thrown into a very hot environment and usually it is called a coffee roaster. The heat of the roaster evaporates any moisture trapped in the coffee. The heat of the roaster will begin to reduce the complex sugars into simple sugars, making them easier to taste. And as the roast develops some of these sugars, they will begin to caramelize, creating a nutty and caramel aroma. Y'all know that good smell that we smell around the coffee. To make any coffee drink though, y'all, we take the ground coffee and you have to add some water because water is an amazing solvent. It pulls apart the bonds of other molecules, causing them to dissolve in the water. And when we heat the water, all of its molecules will begin to move around quickly, making it an even more effective solvent. The coffee bean, y'all, has all it needs inside of it from creation. But it is through the roasting and passing through the hot water that the richness and goodness of the bean is drawn out so that we might enjoy the light roast, the medium roast, the dark roast in the morning that blesses our lives. Let me help somebody. You have everything you need inside of you. All of the anointing and giftedness and power as you are drenched in the roasting or the refining fire of life, the hard days, the intense process, the waiting. It is ordained by God to prepare you for what's next, to draw out the goodness from the deep well of wisdom and power given to you by the Holy Spirit. And then the pressing and the heated hard times are preparing you for what's next. The hard days are all working out for your good because God works all things for our good. And then the water, we call it the living water that Jesus offers is a wellspring that will spring up in your life so that you might not thirst no more so that it might continue to draw out uh, the goodness uh, and heal uh, some woundedness so that you can be an agent of healing uh, in this earth. Uh, it will sustain you, uh, the living water. It will provide peace uh, in the midst of turmoil, uh, the living water. It will provide joy in the midst of pain uh, and strength uh, when you feel like you can't make it anymore. Can, every, can anyone praise God for the living water, the living water that God provides for us? Uh, and I declare over your life today, uh, you will get through this. Uh, you will get through the hard times. Uh, and how do I know? Uh, because I remember David, uh, the anointed one of God, uh, anointed by Samuel uh, as a young boy, uh, but was terrorized by Saul for many years. Uh, David carried the anointing in obscurity, y'all, uh, as he ran from Saul. Uh, 
due to death threats uh, on his life uh, and fought many battles as a fierce warrior and served in King Saul's inner courts uh, as his gifts uh, made room for him uh, and he observed the systems of the empire. All of this prepared him uh, to step into, uh, to step up uh, and embrace the call uh, that was on his life. Uh, David sees uh, his moment uh, and all I want us to understand is uh, you will get through this. Uh, God has gifted you. Uh, God has prepared you. Uh, God has ordained you. Uh, God has called you to walk uh, in the fullness of your purpose and call uh, and you will uh, get through this. Be teachable, be teachable, be teachable and willing to allow the spirit of the living God to draw out uh, the goodness, the wisdom, the power, the anointing so that you can walk uh, in the fullness of the power God has given you. Um, and y'all, this is my last point. I'm going to hurry on and finish up. In order for us to seize the moment, we must also be willing to follow God's plan. Just say, follow God. Type that, follow God. After leaving his parents in hometown at the end of verse 21, it says, Elisha went with Elijah as his assistant. The NIV version says he followed Elijah and became his attendant. In order for Elisha to seize the moment, he had to follow the plan God had for his life. And every great leader in scripture accomplished powerful things in their life because they used the gifts they had and they were obedient to follow God's plan. Joshua led the people of Israel into the promised land because he was obedient to God's plan. Y'all remember the story. And after obeying God, God made the walls of Jericho fall and they entered the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. Then there was Gideon. He believed and trusted and obeyed God by taking only 300 men to fight the Midianite army who was vastly larger than them. But God gave the Midianites over to Gideon and his men. And then there was Esther. She became the deliverer of her people because uh, she trusted God's plan and spoke up in a life or death situation. Uh, Y'all, I'm closing, but all I want you to understand uh, is that when you follow God's plan, uh, you will always win. Uh, I want to say that one more time. Uh, when you follow God's plan, you will always win uh, because our God uh, is all things, uh, control of all things. And if God has brought you to it, then God will bring you through it. You will always accomplish that which God has de de designed and predestined for your life. It won't be easy, but it will be possible. You might have to endure the refining fire or even the pruning process. But remember those whom God prunes, he prunes them so that they will bear more fruit. Hallelujah. But you will come out as pure gold. And when you are thrown into the lion's den, guess what? God will protect you. So go on and smile at your Haters, uh, because they are just elevators. Uh, they are taking you to another level uh, and to another level. Uh, as long as you lean into God uh, and lean into the spirit of the living God, uh, God will continue uh, to direct your path. Uh, Y'all, I want you to seize your moment. Uh, God is doing a new thing. Uh, follow God's plan for your life. Uh, God has brought you into a new realm of possibilities. Uh, don't be scared. Uh, but be faithful uh, to where God wants to take you. Uh, God is inviting you to seize the moment. Uh, don't hesitate, uh, in, but move in confidence, uh, knowing that if God brought you to it, uh, then God will bring you through it. Uh, seize your moment. Uh, take hold of what God has for you. Uh, it will bless you. Uh, it will bless those that are connected to you. Uh, it will bless the next generation uh, and the next generation uh, as you pray pray and as you serve uh, step out on faith and seize your moment 
Hallelujah. God wants us to seize the God-ordained and divine opportunities that God has given us right now. And I know that sometimes they can seem scary, y'all, because I'm a testimony that even what I'm doing right now was scary for me. It wasn't something that I was like, yeah, 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 here I am, here I am. But it's what God called me to do. So with fear and trembling, but with faithfulness, I continue to be obedient to the voice and spirit of God. And that's all God wants us to do is honor the Lord, trust the Lord, and to step out on faith and go where God wants us to go. And guess what? God will work out all the details. Beloved, I'm glad that you joined us on this last Sunday in July. I'm glad that you are worshiping with us. If there is one person who would love to be a part of this congregation, we welcome you with open arms and we are grateful that God has invited you to tune in. I believe it's an ordained moment that you are here to hear this word. So I invite you to contact myself at Associate Pastor at CN Jenkins or our Senior Pastor at Pastor at CNJenkins.org. And that way that we can welcome you and connect you with our new members group and just welcome you into this community. Please contact us also at pastor or associate pastor at cnjenkins.org and we will connect with you and minister to you. Beloved, have an amazing week. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. And may the Holy Spirit watch over and take care of you every day of your life. Go in peace. God bless you. I love you. Take care.